Hey everybody, D here, and welcome to this week's continuing review of Secret Invasion. This week, of course, episode five, Harvest. Almost to the end, folks, but we still got a hell of a group here to chat here with you. Joining me, as always, from his secret cave in the unknown north, from Smirking Reviews, it's Rob Stone. Yeah, you you have actually, you don't know how true that really is, because I was because I was literally just watching um the uh the episode uh what's what's right after turn turn turn? Um it's where oh. they go to um to the to winter cave where right. uh we meet yeah. uh we, we meet Pat Oswalt. So that's not too far off right now, but uh, no, unfortunately, uh, instead of there, I'm here. I mean, I love being here. Just uh, <laughs> it's just what we're talking about is isn't as fun, but it's okay. We're gonna still find the fun. So I'll leave it now over here, down here, to Agent Corey, who has returned to the channel. Hello. Yes, I've returned. I was not killed by a scroll. I'm still here. <laughs> I'm also not a scroll. <laughs> Well, that's good because every scroll would be sure to tell us they're not a scroll. No, yes, wait. I... Uh, ah! <laughs> I bleed blue. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Well, and it's so good to have you. It's nice to have a little bit of that uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. back energy. I know there was a lot of expectations that were thrown out by the fandom, like, oh, are we going to see some of our favorites? And wow. that's, that's not happening, wow. folks. Yeah, just, sad tribe modes. It's not, <laughs> it's not that story. We're a little sad on that point, but uh, but we got some some other tales that are being told. Um, look, you've been hearing Rob and I rant over the past uh, uh, few weeks, so let's let's kick things off with Corey right after I say hello to Silva Surfer Bill Casey in the chat live. What up, guys? What's up, yeah. Silva? What's up, Bill? Um, so yeah, let's kick things off. Uh, Corey, how have you felt? I mean, even without the Agents of Shield showing up in any way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. how have you felt about this see this uh, this show? Uh, I was going to say season, but I don't think we're going to go any further than this. How have you felt about Secret Invasion overall? And then jump into your thoughts on this week's episode. Okay, overall, I've I've enjoyed it. I've liked it. I don't think it's at the top of the top in terms of the shows that we've seen. I don't think it's terrible either. Um, I'm enjoying mostly the screen time that I have with Nick Fury. Anytime he's in, in a scene, it's a good scene. <laughs> so I'm, I'm enjoying that. And I'm finding my perspectives on some characters or how I feel towards them is changing. So originally I wasn't a huge fan of Gaia mm -hmm. and I wasn't really sure how I felt about Fury's scroll wife, Priscilla. Uh, and with this this episode, I started really liking Gaia and Priscilla. And maybe that's because I liked the team up of Gaia with Priscilla <laughs> when sure. they had to work together uh, against the common enemy. So in that sense, I figure, okay, I think I'm warming up to Gaia. I'm okay with her. Sure, she can stay, get on the spaceship, join the team kind of thing. Um, also didn't realize I could really detest Rhodey as much as I currently <laughs> I mean, I'm having some kind of a reaction to him. Seeing his character in the past in the movies, I was kind of, eh, okay, he's there. He's a friend of Tony's. So maybe it's a good thing that I'm actually starting to feel angry towards him and really not liking him. Um, and I am interested to see what they're going to do moving forward with the characters that were scrolls, if we end up rescuing those characters, those humans, and they come back into the real world, um, does their character change because of that, because of that experience, right? Um, sure. And that's going to be a lot, I think, depending on where they place that they've been replaced at. Because I know there's mm -hmm. a lot of questions with Rhodey, you know, how long has he been a scroll? You know, is it just now? Does it go back a movie or two or anything like that? Um, yeah. So, yeah, uh, th they definitely have some work to have to do to kind of rebuild. Though, as, as I'm sure Rob can, can attest, this storyline, really nothing like the comics line 
you don't really have the mass replacements. I mean, in mm -hmm. fact, it seems like half of them got sort of cleared up this week with uh, Sonia going around doing her little cleanup there in England. So um, I love her. She's amazing. It's like if the queen was secretly part of like shield, what would she, what would she be like? Um, yeah. So I'm loving that. I feel like they missed the opportunity to really play this as a, sort of Cold War spy thriller in the sense of nobody knows who the other person is and we really don't find out to the last minute. More of like a what they did with Captain America, Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like they could have done more with that. Whereas as I've been trucking along and watching it and watching your guys' reviews, it seems like there weren't a lot of surprises in terms of who's who and who's a scroll, we kind of already knew before the reveal happened, which takes all the fun out of it. It takes the air out of the balloon. <laughs> yeah, there's um I'm I'm actually I'm really glad that that you enjoyed a lot of parts of this episode and of some of the things that I've seen uh uh floating around there and discussions of it, a lot of it has been, as you said, that kind of Gaia Priscilla scene. They seem to have some moments where they can kind of connect. And that was that that really worked for a lot of people. Um, personally, I think last week was the one that kind of just cut the breath out of my expectations into this episode, into the series. Uh, and tonight's to me really did it. Um, I felt that it was a lot of paint by numbers writing. Uh, yeah. And part of it is because you're right they had this opportunity to craft a very interesting, very Cold Warish, And I think the first episode or two kind of played into that a lot better, but it really felt like just uh, uh, the ideas were kind of dropped. They didn't go any further. I think having six episodes limits how much that they can do. Um, but we had, I mean, between the graphic now I'm a villain and I'm going to kill my own people to show how much of an evil person I am, yeah. which is just total paint by numbers bit. The constant, we need to kill Fury, but nobody kills Fury at any point, regardless of multiple opportunities. Yeah. Um, we still haven't dived into, and they could still do it next week, but that's kind of last minute. Really get into the idea of why fury was broken coming back from the 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 blip and they say i think priscilla sort of hits on a little bit like you know he was trying to to save the world and then realized that that everything that he has done is something is still going to happen i kind of get that but i don't the the second hand storytelling of that of like maybe it was this or it seems kind of that I haven't really appreciated it, especially on a series focused so much on Fury. Yeah. Um, and even honestly, again, while I'm glad other people got a lot of great stuff out of it, mm -hmm. to me, the Gaia Priscilla whole sequence was kind of overdone, unnecessary. They spent a lot of time. I mean, look, we know that Talos is dead because mm -hmm. they dragged his body, wrapped it up and set it on fire. Yeah. A very unanimous wow. way to say goodbye to this character. I'm so, it's one of the things I'm so mad about. Um, yeah. But they spend a lot of time doing this and not on the, well, like I mentioned, Fury talking about why. We get the, the, the reason he feels responsible for the whole harvest thing. Mm -hmm. It seems a little ridiculous, but okay. Um, that explains why he came back, but not why he was broken. So I'm uh, that's what my one final hope that I have is at least touch on that next week. Um, well, is it even Fury? That was my question. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Fury with 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 everything. He was the one person that I doubt was was replaced. Uh, though I thought there was a great time to replace Sonia Farnsworth and then get the harvest there at the end. If you'd replaced her in Finland, that would have been freaking brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, and let's not forget the most unforgettable who is that cameo ever. In case anybody was curious, the guy on the plane that yes. flew Fury, he was from uh, Black Widow, yeah. who got uh, who got Natasha the um, the Quinjet at the end of that. 
but I had to look that up. I'm literally, I watched the show and I'm like, okay, oh. this is supposed to be someone. I have no <laughs> idea who it is. <laughs> I remember that. There you go. Well, I'm glad somebody did who didn't have to look it up on the net. Um, you won't take away my Marvel fan card. <laughs> I, I got one point. No, you got it. You got it. No, I will definitely. I will. I will support that. Uh, that fandom uh, uh, cred right there. Um, Rob, what did you? I know. Help us, Rob. It's, <laughs> it's tough to ask this question, but what did you think of this week? How did this work or not work for you? Well, to to be positive up front, right? Let's let's say something positive, which is like first off, if you are out there and you're loving this show, I applaud you. Like what you like, man. Like if you if this is giving you everything you wanted, great. You know, I, I really we've we've talked about expectations and everything and how really our expectations we understood going in what we weren't gonna get and what we were being led to believe we were going to get. And then as it goes on and we keep lowering our expectations to below expectations now, we're like, I'll just take this. If you just, and even then what we're asking for then is like low standard. But taken out of context, there's a lot to like in this show if you don't think about the whole thing. And we said it like there's a lot of real. What's really strange is that there's a lot of really great dialogue, and we've talked about the great conversations that they have. And there's been some in really interesting hand to hand action sequences and stuff with gunplay and everything. And it's all just, but it's it's still just all mixed in with like terrible plotting and terrible story and character to me i'm i'm about ready I, i'm i've been saving judgment till the end but i'm getting really ready to use the word character assassination for a, more than one person in this show so that i mean like i said there's you look at certain things and you go this is working but none of the explanation and none of the other stuff is working and so much is being still telegraphed and what did we say what did i say like episodes ago his big one of his big mistakes is gonna be he's gonna kill the wrong person. And they have this that scene in here. The one his right hand man, the guy who's been standing by him the whole time, questions him once and gets killed, Groot style. And then they all see it. And they all want to turn, but now it's gonna be, oh, he's too strong for us and everything. Like, you know, all that gar and he's he's literally again, the potential to have this guy be a good villain has now just been like pfft, laid bare to just bad plotting, bad storyline. And is and you got to start figuring out like who's like I I said another couple episodes ago I blame the writer and the directors and the people who greenlight these things cuz it's just you see all the potential in here but like you you've got people that just I I don't know. I don't know. I don't like to to I'm trying not to bring intent into this and just say, you know, and just try to be like, you know, they just missed the mark. Um, but it's, it's the, if it, if it wasn't for Olivia Coleman at this point, who's in a, again, in another better movie, because it's a movie. Remember folks, this is just a chopped up movie. Um, I want to see the movie that she's like her versus the scrolls because she's handling things way more capably. And she, we have no context for this character. She, we've never heard of her before. She should be the character. We're all like, uh, just kind of coming in here all of a sudden being all badass, you know, but no, no, it's literally the person that nobody's ever like. So it's, I don't know, and the actors can't even save it now. The actors yeah. can't save it now. Even when you watch them in the scenes, it, it's like <laughs> it's just too far gone. I don't think it's... anybody can argue that Olivia Coleman isn't having the best time of anyone on this show. Um, yeah, I am excited every time she comes in. Her kind of blend of cheerfulness and "I'm going to kill you." 
is is just is perfect. My oh. green scroll drink is much easier to go down than this plot. Isn't she supposed to be the granddaughter of some British version of the Avenger lineup? Um, you know, I'm honestly not familiar enough uh, to pick out where Sonia Farnsworth has come from. I don't know if she's a new character or if she's some legacy or, or passed down. Uh, Rob, do you have any uh, any thoughts on that? Because I... Awesome. This character to me is a character born from great acting. <laughs> this is just a, a creation of a. This is you can tell that the choices and the tones and everything. These are choices by Olivia Coleman, so it's just every little bit that's coming out of her, physically with her body and even just like her. I'm like look at her wardrobe that they give her. She's she's so proper. When she's doing all of this, it's like I would like I would like her to just be like Mary Poppins coming, in, like with a I'm here to kill the scrolls, children, you know, like because she's just uh, I I, I, do, I don't think I think that she is succeeding despite all of this. Like she's seeing the maybe she sees the garbage and she's like I don't care what this says here, I'm gonna make it good. And she she's doing it, but also her scenes are. She's kind of outside of the main plot. Yeah, that's why I say she's in a different movie, because she's been doing her own thing for the whole time, and it's not until now, right, that she's sitting in the car this episode with Fury, getting told all of the stuff that she should have already been told. Yeah. 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 See that I totally. It's agree almost with. like the the show fails her. It's like the character in, like, almost like a, if you if, if you looked, if Olivia Coleman wasn't already acting, the looks on her face would almost be like, are these rewrites? Rhodey's a scroll? What's going on? What, are, what movie are we in? <laughs> because her reaction should, is, is more like what everybody is watching from the audience perspective. But anyway, that's, I'll, I'll let us move on uh, because that's, it's, again, like what you like, but Silver Surfer says that she's supposed to be Union Jack's granddaughter. Yeah. So. Uh, we bust yeah. unions here, Jack. <laughs> perfect. Thanks, perfect. Yeah. Well let's uh let let's dive in. And we can I mean part of the criticism I think can easily stop off on this first scene. Uh for me at least. Now look, a little background. And this may surprise some of you. The budget for this series is over $200 million. Now, that does include some extensive reshoots, which can be expensive. Mm -hmm. But I think one of those reshoots was this first scene with Fury rolling the president into the hospital. The emptiest hospital I have ever seen. There is nobody here. It's just the one hallway. And he doesn't even bother going back in and forcing his way in. The doctors are like, you have to stay here. This is the president. There's going to be a Secret Service agent next to him at all times. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I do like Fury grabbing the chair and sitting down with the gun like, eh, you know, which was cool. Um, and I like it just kind of whisper, whispering in the air. Rhodey's a scroll. It wasn't the Russians. Remember, remember. Um, I mean, I can just, that's why I'm saying, I'm saying this has to be reshoot just because there's like no other cast. There's like a couple of scenes between this one, the one with uh, Fury and Gaia in the old World War II bunker that's just the two of them. And then the flashing police lights in the corner tells him that he has to go. I'm pretty sure that was as well. Mm -hmm. um, and possibly even the cameo, since I don't think there's a single shot with him and Fury together. I think they're just flipping camera one-offs there. Um, but anyway, let, let, let's start with you, uh, 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 Corey. Let's talk about both bringing him in and Rhodey coming to kind of kick Fury out. Because again, that's another one of those, here is your opportunity. 
to kill Fury if you want and totally excuse it. But I guess Graphic wants him alive all of a sudden now. Or possibly Fury, he needs Fury alive to find out where the DNA is being kept. Sure, sure. Of all these Avengers, right? So you can't kill your source. But um, <clears throat> I don't know. I I felt frustrated because I wanted Fury to do something. <laughs> you know, he's Fury. Like, shouldn't he be able to take those two, you know, bodyguards out in a second? He's supposed to be this great, amazing agent. You know, right. he's, he's the agents that agents fear. Like, <laughs> and he's being basically cornered and limited in terms of what he can do now. Part of that I understand is because he's been stripped of his clearance because he was fired. So now he can't go in with the president because he's being blocked again, you know, red tape and all of that. So, okay, yes. And we see this in other films where, you know, an agent is running for their life because they've suddenly been been found out and now every possible, you know, bounty hunter is after them or police source. But I just I wanted him to be able to do more in that scene, aside from just slam Rody up against the wall and them growl at each other <laughs> like you know angry dogs. Well, yeah, and that that's really all it is. I mean, and, and look, and I mean, I understand Gravik saying, "Hey, I want Harvest. We haven't been able to find it," but he's had no problem ordering Fury kind of killed before this. Yeah. Like, why have order his wife to kill him if he doesn't really want him? dead yet um yeah. i think uh I, I i mean and that's where it is it's like i think dogan was completely correct in his criticism of graphic there it's like hey you killed the evil general that you didn't like but you don't care because you didn't kill the president even though you were right there with your group powers and probably could have taken care of him at any moment right there Mm -hmm. Luckily, as we mentioned last week, none of the other soldiers right next to him wanted to help or do anything. Um, and I mean, and yeah, getting the questions of, of you keep trying to kill this guy. Why did you order his wife if you knew his wife would never do it? It's it's this is where it's the annoying like graphic. I'm the evil leader. You will do what I want. Thing starts to really fall mm -hmm. apart because his motivation is 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 completely changed. If you wanted Harvest from the beginning, that should have been, an, like you said, one of those cool Cold War undercutter little things that was secretly happening in the background before it finally all fell apart right here. But now this is like the first time we've heard of it. Now the plan's totally changed. And Gravik's happily to take out his own people to get this done. Yeah, he's he's more focused on the end goal than he is on ensuring longevity like ensuring that his rule will actually last and not go up in a puff of smoke mm -hmm. um yeah i i would like to see theory doing more that's well that's it and i gotta say one i watched this with my wife and that was her one criticism and has been with this show which she doesn't even care to watch anymore because she doesn't like it um but especially is that Fury has never felt like Fury in, in this. I mean, and I like kind of Fury adding a little bit of character and so on into things, and, and, and that's fine. But he was always like very quick, very concise. He wasn't a big talker guy. And now it's kind of like it's more the Samuel Jackson show than the Nick Fury show. And I love Sam Jackson. I love him doing his thing. I just don't know if that is right for this role yeah we haven't had a lot of him sitting down and actually spinning the tail right sure, there was a, there was an idea right we haven't had any of those kind of conversation which makes me wonder is this really fury or is this a scroll fury sent down because he's doing something else again but then how would this fury. scroll know so much yeah it's broken yeah. fury we just don't know why like in the hospital and I don't, we don't need it. Like that was like such a ter like, again, as soon as you walk in and there's like, it just, you just keep reminding that he's with the president and no one else. Like 
it's just so unbelievable. Yeah. It's just there so unbelievable that, 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 that the excuse could be that Rhodey might have called off something or whatever. It'd be like, but that's, no, they still would go, no, no, we got ships and planes and stuff ready to fit at a moment's notice. Because it's a, have we, ever, did this show forget that this is a, that we're talking about Americans here? We got guns coming out, like we, people have guns everywhere. Even the, everybody would have guns, like, anyway. Canadian. The other thing being that Fury's not Fury, and it just it just keeps every single time. It's just well, oh, it would be because of this, or it would be because of that. But it's like no. At the end of the day, the guy is still the guy. We there's no context for this. Everything has happened off screen. Once he went to dust, the only time we've actually seen Fury was when Talos called him up in uh, Sword or whatever they're calling it. Right, and that's it for like a second, and it still looked like Fury to me. And he, so much of his performance, why he's he works as a character isn't because he's some action hero. How much action do you actually see Nick Fury do? It's his presence, it's his command, it's how he per presents himself, and we see him do things just by walking around a room or sitting in his car. We don't see him running and jumping off of buildings and stuff. Fury does it his way. And and we haven't seen any of that here other than to just use the excuse of and replace old man Logan with old man Fury. And it's just, I got too old for this shit. And I got married to a scroll. And I, you know, and now I just don't feel it and I'm running away from the past and it's like all this stuff that just no one like has just been hiding in Fury's head apparently you know yeah and it's just it's just it's not believable it's just not believable and you just you put him in there and you you tell Samuel L. Jackson we're you know you're a producer and you, you're gonna you get all this other clout and you get paid and everything and and it's different it's different. Actors like different. So who's to say that he didn't enjoy himself playing this? But sure. I also feel like he's got a he understands his popularity and what make what works and why people hire him and things like that. And he has to know that going into this and reading this and watching it and and he's probably one of those guys who actually kind of does pay attention to like maybe some of the stuff that goes on around it. And he's got to know in, it, that this isn't theory on some level. And when he's sitting there with Rhodey and Rhodey's threatening him and he's like, the only way to out me is to kill me. Well, first off, he doesn't have to do that to out him. Are you kidding me? If the guy with the gun on him is not a scroll and he just turns to him and goes, look, I'm about to shoot this SOB in the hand so you can see what a scroll hand looks like. Yep. All well, right, this whole uh, this whole thing about you have to kill me to out me, that's not true. They prove it in another scene later with yeah, Olivia Coleman. Immediately following this scene. So yeah, he immediately didn't following track. this. And then he tells him, I just released the whole thing about Maria Hill. Hell, if at this point, if you are not, he's not giving you any reason to keep you alive other than his own survival. But even like what Corey said is, you're telling me that she he couldn't, this character would have been able to pull off. At first off, he wouldn't be in quite the same situation. He'd have a gun on both of them. <laughs> All right? Or so, so it's just this whole thing is unbelievable. Yeah. And, and as fun as Don Cheadle is at, at this scene, you know, it's fun watching them spar and chew, but it, that only works in a better show. Because yeah. all we can see are the flaws. You're supposed to make us ignore those and enjoy it outside of that. Like how I feel about the Flash. I'm not going to get into a Flash thing here, but I'm just saying, when you're having fun, when you're enjoying, actually enjoying something and things actually, like at, at least the characters make sense and things like that, we can forgive a lot of things. 
-hmm. But right down to it, especially how savvy a lot of people are, have gotten since COVID and watched a lot of stuff. There's a lot of people that now understand a lot more about character and story these days. And they're not fooled either. Some of them come in with bad faith, but most of us come with good faith. And we just, we know when you're ruining things for what, but we don't know why outside of dollars, but making a bad story and still thinking you're going to make that money. Mm -hmm. That's where they're starting to see more and more now as we see them make this, the situations that we find ourselves in, or at least the entertainment industry finds itself in all these things. Like I know we're leading towards some of this is uh, like this bad vision of the future. This show is like this, almost like it's ringing in that bad version of entertainment's future. I don't agree with all of like the arguments that are being made about this show with like the AI intro and all that stuff, but like it's, it's bringing in topics that are helping this whole, whole thing uh, really show bad, the, the bad sides of the industry right now. It's really shining a light on it. Well, if you're paying attention to it. And it's interesting that Disney president, Bob Iger, you know, um, was making comments of his feeling that they've been doing too many Marvel things and that the audience is not responding to it. And this is one of the I'm like, it's not the number of things they're doing, Bob. It's the quality of work that you're putting into these. Yeah. Uh, he also mentioned that, yeah, Marvel hasn't really had a big footprint in television, to which Clark Gregg, a.k.a. Agent Coulson, replied, bro. <laughs> which was just a perfect tiny little thing on Twitter. He just was like, bro, come on. And so many other people are like, um, you had seven seasons of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you had three seasons of Daredevil, two, three seasons of Jessica Jones, two seasons of uh, Luke Cage, you had Defenders, uh, Iron Fist was in there somewhere, but we don't really need to say much about that. Um, and yeah, there's a few other shows that didn't really work well. Um, but Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is still one of the top rated shows that Marvel has done. Movie, TV, anything. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is like number two or number three. I think the other one is uh, Ms. Marvel and um, uh, uh, Black Panther. I think are technically rated a little higher by the audience and, and critics and such, but still. So by top... that definition, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is number one. Yeah, exactly. Because um, it's unbiased. Yeah, and even if you look at the Netflix stuff, I mean, come on. Daredevil made the hallway fight a phrase that everybody knows and everybody looks for in mm -hmm. new shows. So can't really listen to Bob Iger when he's going against the uh, the the Writers Guild, the Screen Actors mm -hmm. Guild, uh, giving interviews, mm -hmm. you know, at a uh, billionaire's retreat in Idaho. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, yes, I'm going to hit on. I am a SAG member, so we are SAG after strong, WGA strong. We're supporting all of our unions here. Technically, I cannot, as a SAG member, I cannot promote any struck material or any any jobs that would be struck. However, since this is a review and it's opinion based, I am allowed to do it. Also, I think you can all agree that nothing, nothing of what I'm saying is promoting this show. Mm -hmm. um, let's get on to Sonia a little bit here, um, because, yeah, immediately following the you have to kill me in order to sh to reveal me. You have Sonia Farnsworth walking the SIS office and shooting Weatherby in the hand slash leg <laughs> to immediately turn and show her people, oh, it's a scroll. See, look. Which is, again, rewrites, folks. I don't think this was how this was all originally put together and ordered. That's just my guess. Um, but yeah, she is doing a great thing. Um, everything and we've mentioned it before, that Sonia, that, that Olivia Coleman is doing is awesome. She's having a great time. She has a great Eddie Izzard reference, Keiko Death, 
from an Eddie Izzard um, Dressed to Kill stand-up comedy special from years ago, uh, which I personally loved. That's one of my favorite Eddie Izzard bits right there. Um, but yeah, her whole pleasantness of just like, who do you want me to be? I could be a bestie or I can really be a not your bestie. <laughs> Uh, which which is great and she's doing the cleanup i i was wondering why the doctor is here in england and not at the lab in uh russia where she was doing experiments mm -hmm. earlier that's another one where it feels like we're just doing this to wrap this up but it doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. um but yeah she's obviously cleaning up in england here uh, all of the scroll invasions, all by herself. She's doing Nick Fury's job better than Nick Fury is in England. Yeah. Which, for shame, Nick Fury. For shame. You're getting one up by a, a Peggy Carter esque <laughs> character. Well, Peggy Dude. would. Yeah, I mean. I'm yeah, but Peggy wouldn't have shot her. anybody in the head. She'd have, like, brought him in alive. I guess so. It depends how mad you make her. Well, sure. In, if, if the situation was a certain way, but I feel like Peggy's a little more diplomatic than uh, this character. But, like, you know, that's what's so great about it. It's the unassuming, you know, just so casual about it. She's uh, as intense as Fury is. She's the, like, she's the exact same ruthlessness, just with a smile and a, right. and a chipper attitude and politeness don't let the and, accent fool you, <laughs> you know? yeah and it's just such a also like that guy that i we saw in a hologram that she kills was weatherby yeah that's what what a waste of that guy that guy's one of the best character actors in the freaking world he goes all the way like I, what is it braveheart it's like they think maybe the, like or that guy's, it, he's just in like a hologram scene in this scene, he just gets shot. Like, that's the only thing I'd say negative about the Olivia Coleman arc is that another great character actor could have been a, gotten a more, a bigger role in this. Um, and I would almost just rather watch like a super cut of anything with her. <laughs> just make, make me a, a show where it's a switch Fury out for her because she is the Fury in it. <laughs> Yeah. All right. And I, you know, and make Fury the, the scroll. He's, he's actually the scroll and she's chasing him. And she's like, I don't know where the real Fury is. The mystery is where's Fury, you know, and this agent's gonna mm -hmm. find the truth by tracking down the fake scroll Fury. Because I mean, if he's already not acting like him, he might as well be a scroll and this might as well be a cat and mouse thing where Fury's, contacts within the government and power that he has could give would make him really dangerous in this you know like oh, yeah. I, this is a better plot i know this is a better plot that i just came up with <laughs> because we already have the proof in the olivia coleman scenes and we already know that sam jackson's good at being sam jackson but it would also track for what we joked about like in episodes ago of like maybe this is you know, say <laughs> maybe uh, Fury took off with Captain all the Marvels and said, "One of you's got to pretend to be me." <laughs> They're just making <laughs> you don't it know up what we're doing, man. Just act like you're old and you can't do nothing. And then he leaves, <laughs> and then right away, you know, the the bat phone rings, and oh my God, scroll invasion! And the guy's just trapped there, going, "Oh no!" Because even that, as well. as silly as it is, it's at least would explain some things better. As ridiculous as that would be, but yeah, I don't know. Do you Pardon? have something to add? I just said I'd I'd produce that show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You write it. I'll produce it. It's, yeah, let's we'll talk. My people will talk to your people. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah. Now, of course, we had like we mentioned before, graphic doing the. Uh, to show you how villainous I am, I'm going to start killing my own people and then telling them they're worthless. You're all nothing. You're just here to serve the go, oh, whatever he did before that scene. Um, now, I do appreciate the fact that his people decided, you know, maybe you're not the one that should be in charge here. Um, 
which feels like a good proper move. But again, it also feels like that just wrote bit is he turns on his people, then his people try to turn on him, and then he shows them how much tougher he is. And then he kills more of them in front of more of his people as the warning. I mean, I don't know. I guess this is the authoritarian turn. Um, which, I mean, I get from a storytelling standpoint, it just seems so boring compared to what they could have done. I mean, could this be an inspiring? And it sadly really simplifies the solution. Because now, as soon as Fury is going to take out Gravik, no one's going to continue this war. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not the same like you blow up the one ship and all the uh, the whole uh, opposing army dies. Now it's just they're going to step down because they don't want to fight this point anyway. Except, I don't know, maybe uh, uh, Shooter McGavin, who is still out Did, on the news, right? Remember, I said these people are going to just go back to their jobs. Yeah. They're going to go because they don't need him. Once they realize, like, because look at what, how Rhodey reacted. He's like, tell him yourself. He's basically resigned to, like, I'm out of this. Like, Gravik's going to do what Gravik's going to do. I'm just going to stay back here. And whatever happens, then I'll blah, blah, blah. He's just basically waiting. She is basically mm -hmm. waiting it out. Yeah. While others well, decided mm -hmm. to try to fight him. You know, and that was. Well, yeah, and this is, again, that odd thing. Like, And I get that Fury is defensive of the scrolls and defensive of humanity. He's a, he's a defender kind of guy. Um, but to then go, all right, I will kill my own people to start this war. I don't know who else is going to be left. I know there's like a million yeah. scrolls out there. And we don't know all the people that are undercover. And that's... I think part of the thing is we're like, this is all very nebulous knowledge. Um, but yeah, just that willingness to like sacrifice all of his people. And I don't even understand why. It's great because it would kill if that's where all of the, the humans that have been replicated are all uh, in that Russian uh, 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 nuclear facility. Mm. And then by killing them, you would not be able to revive anybody wouldn't be able to get back anybody that's been replaced i, I kind of get that strategically but i don't know i mean and i've said a few times to me this is just graphic becoming so evil he doesn't even care it's all about him now which just diminishes it just it just turns him into a mustache twirling villain as opposed to somebody that has a like a legitimate beef which he sort of starts out with we don't agree with them but it he, it does make sense from a certain point of view. Yeah. As opposed to just having him go off. Even if it was him losing it, we don't really have a strong reason for him to make that huge left turn. Yeah. And of course, Beto, our scroll that we got introduced to at the beginning of this, who was just looking for a home, he's dead now too. Gets his neck uh, slit open in front of all the other scrolls. So, it, I don't know what he did. What's or what he from a character standpoint? But scrolls killing scrolls, man. Scrolls that's what's scrolls. happening in the streets. Scrolls killing scrolls. Because I feel like that's like if you take out the the bomb that killed thousands when it <laughs> literally it looked like it killed maybe ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> So if you forget that the bomb ever went off, this show's just been scrolls killing scrolls. Uh, mostly, well, you and, know, and none of them I care about. Let's get to the scrolls killing scrolls because, as we mentioned before, Talos is definitely dead, unless they replace him with a scroll playing another scroll dead body. Uh, I think a very, like I said, just a just a crappy way to sign out Ben Mendelsohn. Uh, really, I think that's the thing I'm most upset about with this show at this point is, is, is I think they did Ben Mendelsohn dirty. Um, I am curious how, how did Fury get his body? Cause he left him behind with all the secret service agents. He went right to the hospital. Then he got kicked out after the information was there. I would think the secret service would grab him. I mean, the news did get some great footage 
of Talos there in the middle of this battle breaking into the thing. I, I know they always use, you know, shot footage for this, but that's another one where I'm like, well, this is obviously part of the reshoots because they're like, we need to blame Talos. We'll just use one of the screen grabs from the previous shot that no cameras were at and no public. But okay, you know, we'll go with it. Um, I mean, it's nice of him, and it's nice that guy gets to bury your dad. And again, we confirm that Talos is dead. I was just that was just my one thought. I'm like, where did he get his body from? Who was releasing the alien who attacked the president? to the wanted X-Shield agent. I know he's connected, but that seems a lot. Um, yeah, so we have that. We got the nice little scene with Guy where he talks about the place is cool and she wants to bury him. And I don't know, it was, again, kind of like a touching moment, but also one of those where I... Again, it's just the two of them and then police lights in the corner. So I'm really sure this was an expensive scene to shoot. Um, and then we get the whole Gaia Priscilla bit, which, again, is it, is nice. And, and, and while I wish they hadn't spent the time on this, I do appreciate what they did here. I don't know how Gaia knows where Priscilla lives or any of all that. Maybe it's all well known. But again, I had to stop asking these questions after a point. <laughs> yeah, I, you, if you're, you're watching a show. You're trying to watch the show and the whole time you're just like, but, 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 but. And it's like, how did you, how do you even, like you'd have to watch it like so many times because you'd have to pause it. It's like, it's like watching one of these idiot reaction videos where they start to say something and they pause it after two seconds. And you're like, what? And then you just, you barely understand what's happening because you're pausing it so much to react. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just like, how the heck can we even watch this show? How the heck are we even talking about this show in a rational manner when the whole time it just feels like we're just, da, da, da. even in, during good scenes? Yeah. And Corey, you really like the uh, you like this bit between Gaia and Priscilla, yeah? This this worked well for you. I did. I mean, I liked seeing them team up. Maybe just because we were lacking a logical team up. So when we finally got it, I was like, "Oh, finally! Yes, thank you." Um, yeah, I mean, I liked that we got to see a little bit of the scroll history and like mm -hmm. culture. So when Talos, 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 Talos dies, um, we kind of get a reference towards different generations mm -hmm. reaction to, I guess, moving to a new country. I kind of saw it as a parallel to uh, a family that would move from a country to say the US or Canada. And so sure. like Gaius was, Gaia was kind of the younger generation of, she doesn't know the things of her past, right? She says, I don't know the prayer I'm supposed to say. And um, Priscilla says, it's okay, I know it. And there's kind of that that sort of sadness of, I'm losing part of my, I'm losing my father, which was a connection to my history, which was a connection to my past. But also the frustration of, okay, but what side are you on, <laughs> Gaia? Like, like, do you want to be with the scrolls and supporting the scrolls? Then you, you know, you should probably learn a bit about more about your people. Um, you know, your father was this great general that everybody valued and clearly Fury valued him. Um, so it, I'm, I was just a bit frustrated, but where is she standing in this conflict? Like, is right. she going to finally side with her father? And sort of take his place, which I think is what they're they're leaning towards. Um, why was she even with Gravik in the first place? Like was she was she infiltrating for her father, working with him? I mean that even though they'd had those discussions, it, did, it never really felt clear in in the TV series right. of like, can you just clearly hammer out what exactly is Gaia doing? Is she undercover as a as a mission? Was she originally undercover and then she was persuaded or swayed towards Gravik's way of thinking and then she's now come back? Like it just, it was a bit messy. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm trying to say. 
So I liked that we kind of got a bit more information, that we had a team up that seemed to be equal characters working together. Um, the stunts on that were, were great and fun. Um, but again, like I'm, I'm just, I'm mad we lost. Talos, I can never pronounce his name right. I know. I want to say Talos, but it's Talos is what they Talos, keep saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm we, we lost Talos before we could even have him play out a viable role in this story. Right? Yeah. Because he's, I mean, I... yeah, he's the general, but he's the general that is adhering to the traditional scroll approach of we don't actually want to be fighters; we'd rather be peaceful. Right. And I think, I mean, I think you can kind of piece together the most likely she left as a youth, not wanting to be in this world, to be in her own skin, gravitated towards Gravik because he was talking about getting their own homeland. Mm -hmm. And then from the beginning of the show, saw that he probably went a little too far, found her mom was dead if Gravik was responsible. And then she came back and now she's in the which side do I be on? But the mm -hmm. fact that we have to kind of, there's one thing about trusting the audience to follow that story and another one to go they'll piece it together yeah yeah and and, yes. and that's good right. yeah good writing allows knows that the audience will pick up on the breadcrumbs you're leaving and piece it together bad writing is oh well hopefully she'll they'll figure it out yeah and and just allow everything else important to happen off screen and, and yes, then we'll, we'll put the pieces Right, or we'll just happen. shoot a flare into your face because it's so <laughs> obvious what's happening. Like, we're just going to point the gun right at your face and say, here's the point. Because that's what's been going on this whole time. Like, we're not even, like, the only people, like, I'm not going to get into people's tastes or anything again, but it's like, what what show do you think we're all watching, man? Like that they're not they're spelling things out for us, but it's almost it's being presented like we don't know. Right. Like we're that dumb. And that's just I mean, I just I guess I feel a little insulted if I cared more. But it, you know what I mean? But like if, if they're not taking it seriously, then I how serious can I take it? And Real quick, uh, this justice for Maria is just a placeholder for everybody in this cast, except for Olivia Coleman. Yeah, she's getting her own justice. So place anybody, any character, any actor in there, especially Ben, and and the way that they handled that. Just, I swear to God, even now, if they somehow bring him back. With some doobie, I. What? Okay, not even that. Whatever weird little thing they're gonna throw at us in the finale, because they're going to, right? right? You just know mm -hmm. they're gonna try to throw at least one thing at us, and I'm just gonna pre-boo it. Boo, <laughs> unearned. Boo. Because you didn't earn, at this point. You didn't earn it, and with so many things now looking like. With all like reshoots and and scenes that just end when you can tell that there was more happening, like it happened several times in this episode alone, where just like especially if it's right after an action sequence, it's not like a cut to go to a, a quick cut that goes to another scene of action that you're following or drama that you're following that's super intense and you're bouncing back and forth to keep the tension going between the two scenes. I'm like, oh, oh, oh no, we got to get back to them, you know. No, that's not what happens. It's like a, this, a, the violence in this is 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 dark violence, and and you can tell that by the end there's there's at least another line or two that needs to be said, and instead it just hard cuts to another thing that's happening. Not necessarily, mm -hmm. we're not jumping right into the middle of the action. We're just jumping to the next thing, kind of like Justice League was, or like like a scene and a scene and a scene and a scene. And I talk so much about this that I, I, it's like hard to keep the, this plot straight when I'm talking about it because there's just mm -hmm. so many ways to just be like, ugh, the whole time. 
Sorry. No. Well, and I think that illustrates the need for that consistent writing, which is something that that is being really threatened by a lot of the moves and, uh, and changes that the producers are doing. Like I mentioned last week, you know, this show is not set up like a series. It's set up like a movie, which means the writers, which usually have the strength to carry story from episode to episode and you get a long, consistent, solid arc is now being picked up by a director. And this particular director, while he's done a lot of things, not as much, you know, has, has, has done a lot of commercials and music videos and has done some TV. I don't want to discount any of that, but doesn't seem to have that same feel to really carry that story over and through. Um, and before we hit the last little bit, I did want to hit on just a quick little thread that I ran into Twitter uh, by a guy named Crudell, who's a writer. Um, but he's talking about a friend of his who got a show picked up by Netflix. Uh, there was no money in his budget for writing staff. And he said, I don't want to write every script myself. I've done a lot of TV. Other voices will make the show better. To which Netflix, reflongs, Netflix responds, oh, yeah, totally. This is what you do. Instead of hiring a staff, just pick some writers and tell them you're giving them a script. They'll come in to help break the story and outline but they're not on staff, the guy replies. They're getting a script fee. Developing the script is now part of it. Oh, really? What happens after they turn their draft in? Usually the draft would table uh, the scripts together. They, you get everybody together and then they do the rewrites together as a large group. And they say, well, just call some writers and tell them you can pay them for one day to punch up four scripts. They'll obviously have to read them ahead of time and make notes, blah, blah, blah. Do that twice. Boom. Eight scripts rewritten by a staff, except you didn't have to pay for a staff. Wow. That is the producer approach to putting together a writer's room for a series. That no. shit doesn't work. No. That's how you get inconsistent scripts. You get storylines that don't link together because everybody is doing one day rewrites on things and nobody is there to pull everything together. And the one who has to do it is the head writer who is not there for specifically to do all of that work because they'll want him to show run the series as well when it goes into shooting and to do all those changes there as well. So that is, that is one of the myriad of reasons why the WGA is on strike, is this reduction of writer's staff. And we can see that happening in these shows. This is why these shows have issues and problems carrying storyline through episode to episode and making it feel like a consistent tale as opposed to cut up little bits. And it's so and unfair like to Go ahead, Sorry, go ahead, Rob. Okay. I, just, I was going to say it's so unfair to the fans <laughs> and it's unfair to the people who've created these characters and care about these characters and it's unfair to the actors because then you're giving them this slapdash put together script that they have signed on to to do. Right. And they're, they're destroying the character and they're destroying their career potentially and, you know, letting down fans who maybe have loved this character for all, all their life. Right? Anyway, continue, Rob. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I kind of like was listening to you and just kind of forgot my thing, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the studio it it's, 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 it's look at, at this point it's not really that much it's just another thing tacked on on top of everything else where we're just where i'm just like dog piling you know we're tr I'm, we're trying to be eloquent but at the same time i'm just like but um well let's get was, to the uh, about writing it was something about writing that's all i remember yeah well, let's get to the uh, maybe it'll pop back in, in which case jump jump right in when you do. But let's get to the, the our final little bit, which is basically the the Olivia Coleman, the Sonia Farnsworth picking up uh, uh, Fury to go get the harvest. Um, one, I uh, again, small thing. He takes a private plane, but still goes through a major airport customs area. 
I always thought that you go into small private jets and they'd have their own little private thing, but maybe I don't know this stuff. It was nice seeing the widow, ma the widow's veil. That was cool, and I liked the little back and forth with him and 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 Sonia. Um, but there's there's a few things. One, this is where we really get the the background on what the harvest is, and is basically after the battle for Earth or the battle of Earth, I guess. Battle for Earth sounds better than Battle of Earth, but all right. Um, they Fury basically sent a bunch of his scrolls led by Gravik to go and pick up DNA samples of all the heroes. Why? I don't know. He knows them all. Also, just picking up DNA out of a battlefield, kind of a complicated process. Um. I guess, again, the why is really the more of it. This is also the assumption that DNA is the basis and would give all of their powers. Now, if we were talking more mutants, there would be a logic behind that. I don't know if Captain Marvel's powers are based in her DNA or more of being absorbed the power of an infinity stone. Um, yeah. I mean, the whole group bit, he can turn to wood and then back to him and extend. I mean, again, the, the logic doesn't make sense. And I'm, and I'm fine with that to some extent. Um, I just think it kind of opens up a whole can of worms if you have this type of machine that can just take from DNA and give anyone powers. I think I had a lot of problems with that with season seven of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. too. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But. I don't know. It's it's a can of worms. I get that this is a bad thing, and I understand at least Fury's responsibility is he had the scrolls do this, then the scrolls got the idea to use this against them, and he feels he's the guy to do it. I totally get that. And I sort of get not the idea that he wants the responsibility on him and not these heroes that He's the one who put together to do this exact. I don't know. This is just an excuse to not have Avengers and to have it just be Fury. Any other logic in this whole bit kind of falls apart to me. But maybe you guys picked up something else. I mean, I originally assumed the reason he didn't want to bring the Avengers in is because he was worried that the scrolls would just duplicate the Avengers. But if if they can't duplicate the powers, they can only duplicate their physical presence and that doesn't that doesn't work that whole idea doesn't work right um coming from a science background at one point all i could think of was the contamination on that battlefield <laughs> and the kind of samples you're getting probably not very good and or just would have to be scrapped also how in the world in a battlefield are you going to find track and find that dna like it's a battlefield and like you said that's it how do you know that that's carol danvers dna and not someone else maybe it glows i don't know <laughs> just recreated that hey. like he just went and picked up their shawarma boxes ah there you go the leftover shawarma stuff with their fingerprints and other saliva and everything it would have their names the on their boxes the so garbage. you know who to give them. Yeah. Just yeah, picked up the garbage. The <laughs> I mean, I know I, I know famously Cap wasn't eating, but they probably you know, he's super soldier serum. There's a super soldier serum in the mar in the six one six. Like you could throw a rock and it a super soldier serum. Okay, yeah. so yeah, they didn't really need his DNA. <laughs> So I'm going through the uh, the city. Oh yeah, it was Silva. All right, yeah. I uh, just want to touch on the cat uh, chat a little bit. Uh, Silva Surfer was mentioning that they should use the president from Iron Man three and Agents of Shield, which of course President Ellis. Um, Travis Mitchell mentions hope we're all well. Thank you, Travis. Uh, haven't heard from President Ellis from Iron Man three who survived the extremist conflict, uh, and he speculates that Tony left behind a plan in the event extremists came back possibly um yeah i mean ellis would be way out of office at this point because what iron man 3 was what 2013 and we're effectively in the in the marvel world of like 2025 
So yeah, Ellis, even if that was his first term and he did two terms, he'd be done by the time Endgame and stuff was 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 in play. So we would definitely have a new president now. Uh, it would be cool to see Ellis because uh, uh, that actor is always awesome to see. Um, but, you know, we're, we're not doing too bad with Ritson here, I suppose. Um, dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah, this was the one thing. One Look, I got to say, I love the fact that Fury has tombstones all over the planet. Yes. <laughs> That's Fury. That's freaking cool. <laughs> Um, and I have to say that if you were going to replace Sonia Farnsworth, this would be the perfect time because then she could live in all this knowledge and just be like, oh, there's Harvest, zip and take it and go. That would also be awesome. Uh, would really change things up for the ending. Um, I did love the fact, and we didn't touch on this, that uh, Fury had to inform her that Rhodey was a scroll. <laughs> Which, considering that Sonya is figuring out every other scroll, again, I'll, I'll I'll let that happen. That's that that was kind of fun. Um, so we get the collection of the oh, and and the nice little bit again. They do have nice bits here, and I'm not going to deny that. Just his little bit about oh yeah, uh, uh, Priscilla and I went here for our honeymoon. Scrolls really like the cold, and her little was a perfect bit to just recognize oh oh okay well this explains your other foot in the game here a nice little bit and a good bit of dialogue and i will definitely give them praise for for the few times that they do that well um i like the fact that he also has several different areas because the trench coat the eye patch and his gun all deserve entirely different storage areas that i guess he also has everywhere again you got to get the hero suiting up but he paid the package deal for all three so you know he was like hey you got it you gotta use them all <laughs> yes yes um I was hoping and, we'd get like an AI fury in one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you could just like pull out and activate like Phil. <laughs> that's where the yeah, that's where the LMD should be. Exactly. That would be cool. That would be an interesting <laughs> bit. Uh yeah. now the last bit of speculation, I guess, we get to go in because this is where the episode ends, is he does make a phone call to someone, someone saying, um, this is it. Let's oh, it's time. Let's finish it. Let's finish this. I know a lot of people are like, he's calling Daisy. No, he's not. Okay. Daisy has not been referred to in the show at all. And he's not calling Colson. Some people thought is it an Avenger? Is it, you know, is it Maria Hill who's not dead? Is it Talos who's not dead? I know there's been a bit of speculation. Um as that's always the fun part of the end of these episodes. What do you guys think uh, uh, Fury called? Corey, let's start with you. Who do you think that Fury called to say, let's finish this? I mean, realistically, I'm assuming it's some kind of contact scroll, either on Earth or in space, that has been kind of waiting on the sidelines, or um, Carol Danvers. Okay. But I would love it if it was uh, Natasha. <laughs> Not going to happen. Yeah. But... Well, I think she's dead at this point, right? <laughs> but yeah. Hey, so we who knows? Do have, we do have DNA samples. There was a program to bring back Avengers. I That's mean, true. <laughs> I can they, dream. <laughs> they will just reform. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, Rob, who do you think that Fury is calling to get assistance from? There's three answers to this that I have. One's yeah. the joke. He's talking to Kevin Feige. <laughs> <laughs> Two. Uh, it Whatever it is, it's going to be that thing that's thrown out of left field and I already said, boo, unearned, boo. Or three, it's just Barra or some, just somebody we already know. Yeah. Just it's not, We know it's not, and it'd be even sillier if it was 
Olivia Coleman, who's just he's calling. She's in the car. <laughs> calling from the crib, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I got my stuff. Let's finish it. I'm, I'm, been, I'm you know, right. I'm just, 20 feet from, from you, Fury. You in the car, you didn't have to make the phone call. Like, because, because honestly, again, we're I'm lowering the expectations to below expectations, and it's just probably somebody we already know, mm. you know. But if not, boo. I mean, if it was Maria Hill, I would be very happy with that. But I don't know how that would work unless the Maria we saw killed was like an AI double. Um, nope. Or, yeah, or it's Fury is actually calling the real Fury. So this is Fury scroll calling the real Fury being like, okay, now you need to come. Sure. Maybe he's talking to the president. You know. I'm, I'm going to follow your guidelines, Rob, and put this at the lowest possible denominator. You're right. It's got to be someone we already know because they can't bring in anybody new suddenly in the last episode. It would feel more dues ex machina than everything else. I think he just called Gaia. Yeah. Or Gaia. Any of them. Priscilla dropped her off somewhere in London yeah. and she left. So yeah. I'm assuming he's calling her and she's going to bring scrolls and that's going to be the cavalry that he refers to in the uh, in the in the previous. Again, they're not going to do anything nice. Keep this basic. He's calling. Hey, this it is what should I be May, but again, we haven't referenced anything else in this se in this series, so I don't see how they're going to pull someone out of the blue, even. And they've said so much about not calling any superhero folks. I can't see it being an Avenger either or anything like that. So, yeah, I'm going to try and keep this as basic. I think he called Gaia, who's going to get the scrolls, and they're going to be his backup because everybody hates Gravik and nobody trusts him at this point. I so. think the better question, a better guess would be how, what's going to be the actual runtime? Because this was like, I think, right, right there. As same as last week, so I would say we're looking at. I'm gonna be nice. I shouldn't be, but no, that's not even nice. I'll say 35 minutes all in. I don't, and I mean, without recap, without intro, without end credits, 35 minutes, which would put it in their terms around 46 minutes. Yeah. I know. I was thinking 42, 44 minutes myself. Yeah. With uh, with credits and previously on. Travis has an interesting point in the chat. He talks about potentially Nick is separating the different parts of his costume because they're associated with different parts of his identity or his past, like lessons he's learned. So he learned something from the the, the cat and the eye patch scenario. Sure. And as he's putting these bits of his costume back on, he's becoming fury again. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would, I would go with that. It's definitely the suit up scene, you know, where he's, he's getting his mojo back. And I've said, I think since episode one, you know, I've been expecting the scene to come up as like, as soon as he puts it on, then it's on. It's like, okay. all right. Now, as soon as the eye patch goes on, it's, it's that. And, I think that's pretty much where we left the episode. So I'm I'm hoping next week again gives us that little background on why he turned away, though at this point I kind of doubt that they will. Um, and that we're just gonna have a big powered showdown. I think somebody brought up in chat. Oh yeah, Bill Casey brought up in chat. Why do you feel like this show is going to end with Nick Fury injecting himself with Harvest and punching Gravik a bunch? Will he need the fancy machine to get to that in there? But yeah, if he goes all Carol Danvers on Gravik, uh, I don't know. Might be kind of satisfying, but also like, well, then what do you do with him afterwards? Uh, the smartest thing is to have that be poisonous. And then when he injects it with himself, he blows up or something like that. Yeah. I think that would be the way to do it. Yeah. I also heard um, online, at least, the idea that maybe the Fury that goes in and does the fight isn't actually our Fury. It's Gaia as Fury. Because she that. already has that like regeneration power. So even if she does get killed, she can come back. 
Okay. You know, Perfect. I would totally buy that. I would totally see that as something that they uh, that they could do. Um, because yeah, you have to have at least some other little surprise and mix around going into the end. I I, I don't see this coming out as just a straight fight. No, because I mean, he wouldn't survive. Yeah, I mean, come on, let's be honest. <laughs> Nick Fury is tough up here. The body isn't going to stand up to Gravik, who just like took out twelve scrolls, which we yeah. all know are super strong compared to humans. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it would have to go something like that. All right. Well, um, any final thoughts or anything before we uh, we wrap this up, uh, Corey? Why is Rhodey such a absolute <laughs> insert whatever descriptor you want to do there? Um, like he has this absolute hate on for anything human. The the anger he needs to go to therapy essentially. I <laughs> like yeah. Well. Well, I did love that one bit where they did the uh, the the reveal of Scrody being a scroll and that he's what looked like to be a young female scroll is playing Rhodey. So I could see how that's just not only do you have the youth and the scrolliness, but also kind of the anger about being in the skin of this older man. And I can say old because Don Cheetah looks great. Um, but yeah, I, I think that there's probably a lot of that in there. Or yeah, it's that disdain for humanity that he's hiding behind uh, uh, Rhodey's face. Teenage uh, angst, scroll yeah. angst. Exactly, and you know, and and you know, it's they're kind of doing the Yoda thing. Because what didn't uh, Talos said that he's like 140 or something like that, but he hasn't even hit middle age yet, so mm. got pretty long lifetimes. Yeah. I will say I did like Fury's comment about how Talos didn't lose, that he chose the harder fight. Yeah. That he chose the path of struggle. He didn't lose. He can, and you can't let grief paralyze you, Gaia. This is your time, right? So it seems like he's preparing her to step into a leadership role for her people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I totally suspect that's it. That's why I think that she is the cavalry or she is the the assistance that he's calling in on. Yeah. Uh, Rob, you got any, any uh, uh, final thoughts or, or things we missed? Just that if, look, my my sister and I, uh, we've been watching, rewatching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because she hadn't seen much of it. And I've just been sitting there enjoying watching her experience this far superior television program that no one wants to acknowledge outside of our freaking small fandoms of it. And yesterday we got to the end of the beginning, turn, turn, turn and Providence. Mm -hmm. That's Watch the episode. those three yeah. episodes, folks. If you like age, if you're an agents of shield fan, you've seen all the episodes and this leaves you salty and you want to see how it works. Right. Watch those three episodes and you'll just go, why the heck, what the heck is going on here? Yeah. Because in those two, even if you don't watch Providence and you just watch Turn, 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 which, look, if you watch Turn, 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 you're going to watch Providence because you're going to have to see what happens after Turn, Turn, Turn. But what I mean is <laughs> watching my sister go, oh, no way. Oh, no way. Oh, no way. Like over and over because things were just coming at it and it was earned and and you understood emotions and character development and, and why this is important, why this hurts and why this is cheer, like what makes you cheer and why the bad, like good villains mm -hmm. that really you don't have layers and layers of stuff. And they had, they didn't get tons of screen time. Not all of these people got tons of screen time. Garrett just kind of showed up and Bill Paxton just killed the crap out of it so that when, uh, spoilers stuff happens you go what just like everyone else i mean come on and this is how many years ago this is basically the same time as iron man 3 so like 2013 around this time right was when agents of shield came out all 2013 when it premiered yeah yeah so like we got to see like all this stuff happening like connecting to the marvel universe and how they utilized all that stuff so much better on a abc show that no one believes in and yet, here they throw this at us and say, you'll like this, right? You'll take anything. It's It's got the stars. It's got the big stars in it. 
Right? You like Nick Fury, right? And you like Maria Hill, sort of? And, like... and then you kill her. <laughs> and then you just watch this show, and you watch Ages of the Shield, you just go, why the hell would I... Like, just stop watching Secret Invasion. We'll tell you about it next week. We'll save you the time. I'll do a... Like, I haven't seen Rise of Skywalker, folks. I still don't plan on seeing Rise of Skywalker. Don't watch next week's episode of this if you don't like it now. And just listen to what we say mm -hmm. about it. Because that's the only way I've taken in Rise of Skywalker, and I still feel like I haven't seen it, even though I've, it's had it been described to me. So if you're tired of it, just go watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and we'll tell you about this, like, turd next week. And see if we can flush it. And look, if you want to watch those Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episodes, you can go even through the rest of that season, and you'll still get Nick Fury and Maria Hill doing great character stuff that feels perfectly in line with them. Alive. Alive, yeah. And yeah, a decade ago. A and decade the last ago, thing I'll say is uh, to the chat again, you guys have been awesome. Babaro, Rich Rum, Bill Casey, my Critical Role guy will be watching Critical Role after this, Bill. I will be there. Anybody else who wants to watch Critical Role with us on my Discord, we can figure it out if you like it. But also like Silver Surfer and Rena is here and everybody's here. It's awesome. We're talking about a terrible show, but somehow we're all still together. So that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, y'all help make help us get through it. And I appreciate that. Yeah, definitely a great chat. We had Bill Casey, Silver Surfer, uh, the Rich Room, Eric Scott jumping in there. Uh, Babaro came in, Dina, or uh, Rena Dietrich. Yeah, I can get those letters in their right position. Uh, and Travis Mitchell jumping in here at the end with some great little comments as well. Even bringing up the old David Hasselhoff, Dick Fury movie. There's a callback right there. I should I, be busting out my that that uh comic I showed you a long time ago with the life model decoy Fury for the first time. I should that showing you guys that comic would be worth is worth is better to look at than this show sure uh, all right Corey. where can people find you oh you can find me on my author's website which is called literature with charm uh, or on my facebook and my website under my author name c l shoemaker yeah you can check me out there perfect and of course uh you got rob who's here every week, but also do a little bit of stuff on Twitch. I was enjoying the other day there, Rob. Okay, yeah, I mean, we're at Smirking Rob Plays, all one word. We are having fun over there again. We are, we're in the middle of Batman Arkham Knight. We did just finish uh, the demo for Final Fantasy 16. if you want to hear. <laughs> I get weird on some of these. So, like, the Final Fantasy 16 demo, we did the Midnight Suns. Uh, we tried to do the two-hour Midnight Suns time trial. I could only make it about an hour and 20 into the two-hour trial because it's so horrible. But it's a lot of fun to make fun of. So if you like if you like watching me talk crap about a terrible Marvel card game, uh, that's on there too. And uh, Twisted Metal 2, uh, that just finally came out for PlayStation. I got like 51% of the trophies already. But I played a game that I haven't played in like 20 years, and that was kind of fun. So we're doing a lot over there. And then, yes, of course, we're here uh, all the time. So Perfect, perfect. And, I'm, of course, I'm D. This is my channel where we are supporting the Hollywood unions in their strike against the AMTP, uh, the, the Associated Motion Picture and Television Producers. It's easier to say that to remember the, well, the order of, uh, of those letters. Um, and uh yeah uh this is going to go for a long time the producers do not appear to be making any move to come into negotiation they have spoken quite clearly that their intent is to starve people out until they start losing their houses and their apartments and their way of life and this is the time where the unions are going to all stick together and uh try and and get a good contract with all of the AI, all of the speculative media going forward, um, they need to get this stuff. The producers tend to get away with a lot because any attempt to fight them is requires a lot of money. You've got to get lawyers. You've got to get access to information that they are not sharing. Uh, one quick little bit I'll leave you with. Uh, actor John Cusack 
and a lot of great stuff when I was a kid. Did a movie like 30 years ago, a little rom-com bit. Uh, there was a, a boom box involved. I think you guys know the one that I'm talking about. That was not a very expensive movie to make. It did very well in theaters. Not only that, it's done very well in the ensuing years. It's one of the more popular films of his, as far as I know. Amazingly, he actually got points on that film, which is he gets percentage of profits. That's net, not gross, so it's after all of expenses. Few people get this on occasion. It's very rare, but sometimes this is the way that you can actually make money on for small budget production. He hasn't seen a dime from that film. Apparently, that, that movie is still losing money year after year. 30 years later, on I believe a $19 million budget, still not producing a profit, or at least not one that the uh, uh, production company will share with the actors. This is not an uncommon thing. Um, there's one of the uh, creators behind the Men in Black movie, and he's put this on thread for years. Also has points, also has not seen a dime from Men in Black. Apparently it's losing $6 million a year at this point. Which is a shame because, I mean, it spurned, what, three sequels? And none of those could be making any money. So look, these producers are suffering, obviously, because despite how much money any of these movies make, they never seem to turn a profit. Or at least that is what they're sharing with the people who, who they owe money to. These are the things that the writers, these are the things that the actors, these are the things that the industry is trying to stand up against. Without doing it, you're going to have writers replaced by AI. Uh, there is a South Park episode out there right now done by Fable Simulation that is completely written, edited, voiced, just with a prompt for, for AI. Go on Twitter, look up Fable Simulation. It's not funny, it's not a good episode, but it's close enough to a script and a completed project where you can then, like I, I just talked about on Twitter, take it to some writers, pay them a day rate to pump up the script and throw in some jokes, and boom, now you've got episodes done extremely cheaply well, and nobody is making money off of this except for the producers. Pay your artists, pay the creators fairly for the work that they put into it, and you're going to get a better product at the end. I'm D. This is D's Reviews. We will see you next week. Don Willie should be joining us. Thanks for your time. We'll catch you next. Bye bye.